What's up folks? Today we're going to talk about file system encryption. Now, your computer probably has full disk encryption available, if not turned on by default. On macOS, like I'm using for this demo, it's called File Vault. On Windows, it's called BitLocker, and on Linux, it's called Lux. And as you might be able to see by my license plate collection, I use OpenBSD, and they also have a full disk encryption option available. But we're talking about something portable like this device, uh, one terabyte hard drive that I just formatted. Something that we can take between our computers, regardless of which operating system we're running. And for that, I really like Veracrypt. Veracrypt is the logical successor of TrueCrypt, which was pretty much the groundbreaking full disk encryption suite available. It stopped being maintained after a weird cryptic message got posted, but Veracrypt's source code has been fully audited and I believe it's still one of the best encryption tools available to us mere mortals. So the first thing we've got to do is create a file system that's encrypted. Now, you do that by hitting create volume and this menu option may be here or depending on which operating system you're using it may be up on the menu someplace else but in the Mac version it's right here. Now we can create a, an encrypted file container which is just a really big file on the drive itself and it's kind of obvious that it's encrypted, but we have to think about how big do we want that file to be, and that may also be limited by what file system is on the external hard drive. I really prefer to do the partition encryption instead, so we're going to select that option. I'm going to move this so it's a bit out of the way here. Now we can create a standard TrueCrypt volume, which is what we're going to do, but it's worth talking very briefly about hidden TrueCrypt volumes. These are for extreme circumstances where there's a high risk that very sensitive information may be lost and there's the possibility that you may be um, extorted or blackmailed into providing the encryption keys. That's not really our threat model here. So we're just going to create a standard TrueCrypt volume. Now we have to select the device to use for this. And a lot of times it's going to pop up a UAC prompt in Windows or ask for your password in Mac OS. And then it's going to provide you a list of your devices. Now here you really want to make sure you choose this, the correct device and that it's a device that has nothing on it that you care about. So if you're going to be overriding an external drive like this one, make sure you back up your data first if it hasn't been backed up. And make sure that you select the correct device because this could format your main hard drive on your computer if you're not careful. It will warn us that we're about to erase everything um, but and it's going to tell us that we should probably create a container. I really don't want to create a container on this and it will warn us it's going to format it. Now, it provides us with a couple of encryption algorithms and numerous hash algorithms as well. I suggest you do some of your homework. I'm going to stick with the defaults on this. Typically, uh, I like to use Blowfish encryption, but I'm just gonna stick with the AES and SHA-512 for this demo. We have to select a passphrase. I recommend a very long passphrase. I'm going to use a short sentence that I, I can remember for this demo. But you'll want to make sure that this is something fairly long and complex. This is a little shorter than I would probably make a real passphrase for an encrypted volume. You can also use key files. Key files should be extremely random, but I have also seen people use something innocuous like uh, a picture of a family pet or something as the key file. This is an additional layer of security. I would still recommend using a very strong passphrase. Large files. It's going to ask if we want to create the volume to support large files. Given the fact that this is a nice big one terabyte volume and that I may very well end up storing um, family videos and other high resolution images, um, PDF files, big legal documents that could be larger than four gig, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. For your file system, 
This will vary depending on which operating system you are creating your volume on. On Windows, it's going to give you NTFS as your default option. On Linux, it will probably choose the XT4. But almost all of them, I think all of them, in fact, will let you select XFAT as your file system of choice. I'm going to quick format. Because there's nothing of value on this drive right now, it's been freshly formatted and wiped. But you probably shouldn't choose quick format. I'm just doing that for the demo. XFAT is cross-platform though. XFAT is probably the thing you want because I can use XFAT from Windows, from Linux, from OpenBSD, and here from Mac as well. Note that I did have to install the MacFuse extension before I, before I got started on Veracrypt. I did not cover that, but you should probably look at the MacFuse extension. You do have to have that installed and set up before you can do Veracrypt on Mac. And here we talk about cross-platform support. I definitely plan on using this on all of my computers, so I will enable cross-platform support. Now here it's going to ask you to generate randomness by moving your mouse around in this window. You should wait until this progress bar reaches all the way to the end. This can take, I don't know, three or four minutes of just wiggling your mouse around in the window. I'm going to go ahead and hit format before that's completely done, just for the sake of this demo. Again, it will give you one final warning. You're going to lose everything on this drive. Now, it's going to create the encrypted container, and then it's also going to create a XFAT file system inside it, and you can see that it has successfully created the volume. We can actually get out of the wizard now and go on to accessing the volume. So now we select a device, and again, we have to select the partition that we have erased, and that's this 904 gigabyte partition on this one terabyte drive. And then we choose mount and we have to select a slot here on windows this will be like a b colon uh, d colon e colon whatever select something so that it puts it on the drive letter but that's fine now i'm going to type the sentence in that i used for my passphrase and say okay at this point it's connecting the drive and you can see untitled shows up this has no files in it at all, uh, but I could, for instance, make a copy of my screenshots directory as it uh, copies over some of the screenshots that I've taken over the past few years. Now, this is where I would normally recommend you, you would store your medical records, tax records, financial information, um, password lists, and other sensitive details on a drive like this that you can take with you between computers. If we dismount, then this volume goes away and now the data that is on this drive is secure at rest. This is an encrypted one terabyte hard drive. That's all I've got today. Thanks for watching.